Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep. Three. Look at the camera. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Hallows at Noon. I'm your host, Liam Noonan. I'm joined by a very a special guest of mine, my brother, Aiden hey, Noonan. Way high. And today, we're just going to have a conversation about specific topics. More specifically, uh, we have... of children content on YouTube or on other mediums. Yeah. So we have a couple of examples that we'd like to talk about. Uh, more specifically, this one channel that um, oh, okay. that I think got deleted a couple of years ago. Team uh, DO5, Daddy O5? Yes, sort of. We'll get into that though. Daddy O5 was a YouTube channel that was infamously known for pulling pranks on their children that were more hurtful than helpful, really. They were more abusive. So, let's, let's start. Um, number one, the youngest kid, Cody, remember? Yeah. I haven't really caught up, I don't really know about the channel. Well, I just know that they were caught up in the scandal. Let me, let me give you a background. Yeah. Cody was their youngest child, and they would pull the biggest pranks on him, um, and their, the videos that involved Cody would get the most views. Okay. Um, so... For example, there was this one, one prank where the mother, she poured invisible ink onto Cody's carpet and blamed him. And it sent Cody into a, a fit. He was hysterical. And... They would, um, they would make merch out of Cody being hysterical. So, all the commentary videos that, um, that went into detail how bad their abuse was, um, they basically said, what's gonna happen to the child in like 15 years from now because all the, all of the peers at his school probably, pro probably saw yeah. their videos. So, any thoughts, Aiden? I feel like this is a more broad spectrum topic. Mm -hmm. It's not just one channel that's at fault. Like, the channel got deleted, but in a sense, it was reincarnated through the oldest. Through the two oldest now. Okay. Some other examples that I could think of mm -hmm. um, are not the name of the channel, but there is basically this um this sort of like lolly dress up girl. Okay. What what's lolly? Lolly is basically there's this Chinese trend where people try to dress as doll-like as they can. Okay. A lolly is a 
character type that is very cute. He's very short. You know, very stereotypical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um, this girl, this teenager when the channel started, was basically controlled by her mother. Yeah. Was based. So the mother manipulated the entire channel. She had control over everything. Her accounts. Yeah. Her YouTube account. Her Instagram account. <laughs> stuff like that. So, when other YouTubers tried to get in contact with her, yeah, they never contacted her. They contacted they the contacted mother. They contacted the mother, who then antagonized the people that were trying to collab with her. So, it was around the time when the whole controversy started. Mm -hmm. And then... The girl broke her silence. She said that the mother had control of her accounts. That sent fans <laughs> into the spiral looking at the tweets, the videos, the messages. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the mother had been posting as her for years. Mm. And the fans got really investigative comparing their use of the English language. The mother was noticeably less proficient in what she posted than the girl. Right, because the girl was probably in English class, so she was probably learning English. Yeah, but she was, she still had the heavy, like, Japanese accent, so, mm. um... And people that that started the hashtag save her because they wanted to get her out of that house. So there was also an instance where she first got a boyfriend. Yeah. They were supposed to get married, but about I think a month, in, a couple months into the engagement, mm -hmm. they mysteriously break it off out of nowhere. The boyfriend basically drops off the face of the earth. Yeah. Doesn't get mentioned on the channel, on the... Stops appearing in the videos. Stops getting mentioned in the accounts. I'm Upon, just checking to make sure the yeah. camera's staying. Go ahead. Um... Until a couple months later, he suddenly reappears, and they're back together. Mm. And that's around the time that she starts breaking her silence. She then leaves the mother to move in with the boyfriends. She quits everything. She quits the channel. Okay. The mother starts accusing of the people that were trying that broke their silence about the way she acted at the conventions compared to when they reached out to her. Again, yeah. Saying that they were the ones being really they were being victimized. And how old are, were these children? The start of it, the, the girl was maybe 14. By the end, by the last time she uploaded a video, she was 19, 20. Okay. So this wasn't like it was... Illegal or anything. Illegal. It, it, yeah, it kind of It kind, kind of was. was, but it doesn't... It didn't just happen for a couple of years. This mm -hmm. was... Five... Four or five years that this went on over. And it's not like YouTube was fairly existent at the time. I mean, this was, when this started, it was maybe 2011. And YouTube was maybe created four years after? Four years before? YouTube was created in 2006. So, like, five years before. Yeah. So, YouTube wasn't looking out for stuff like this. Probably still isn't. <laughs> Instagram, the bots that they might have there aren't looking out for this. Yeah. So... 
mean, there's a couple other channels I can think of that, but it's not really on the parents for their misbehaviors. It's more on the actual creators. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jake Paul. <laughs> Jake Paul. <laughs> What else? Oh, what man. has Jake Paul not done? <laughs> Jake Paul. Well, hold on. But for those who don't know who Jake oh Paul my is, God, you gotta catch up, man. <laughs> Jake Paul was a famous uh, influencer. Well, he is a famous influencer. Uh, he got his start on this. Um, Vine, this on old, this like old comedy site. Yeah, this old social network called Vine, but Vine got shut down by Twitter. So he moved. To he YouTube moved to YouTube with his older brother, and he started doing vlogs where he was more controversial. He was more controversial. He broadcasted to children, which under PETA. Kappa. Kappa is the, the Children's Protection the, Act against, said by the FTC against against broadcasting to children. Yeah. Uh, what was the other channel? It was just on the rise at the time. They both confessed to broadcasting their products. Um. It was some. It was like Jaden's World or something. Oh, Ryan's World. Ryan, Ryan's World. Yeah, Ryan's World. Ryan's World is a YouTube channel run by the parents of this four-year-old kid, um, and they have him review different toys. So, um, Ryan doesn't really see a, a scent. Of the videos that he's he's making, it goes, it goes towards directly the towards the parents. I mean, and I don't believe that every channel directed at children is like this, because mm -hmm. they aren't. There are some channels that generally want to make content that aren't exploitative or broadcasting or anything like that. Yeah, like some family channels, some gaming channels that are overtly directed towards children, but the problem is the medium as a whole. A lot of kid-run YouTube channels mm -hmm. aren't kid-run. They're, they're run by the parents. They're run by the parents. The parents see everything. The kid sees nothing. And that's, that's kind of what I want to get at. Yeah. Parents having all total control over everything of their child's channel um Jake Paul does this he advertises to kids God, Jake Paul's a... so that he can Dumb get <laughs> he can get the kids his, his fans to buy buy product tickets buy merch buy whatever yeah. the hell he wants um there's, there's so many YouTubers out there nowadays that follow the success, frankly, that Ryan's toys, toy reviews has. Because a couple of years ago, um, because of the, the brand deals that that channel's making, Ryan's toy reviews making, Forbes listed it as the most successful YouTube channel for that year. It made over 21 million dollars that year. So, the child is not going to see one cent, He's basically. not going to see a cent. It's not... Only, is, only if the parents are nice enough and not greedy to give the child at least half the money. And that's the problem with most children-related content. Mm -hmm. 
adults control every Everything. aspect of their life. Everything. So it's like shows aren't going to mature unless parents let children watch more grown up content. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The parents believing they're doing what's best for the child aren't going to change. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big problem. That's that that's huge. His parents get too much control. Mm hmm. Like, once again, this isn't a knock against all YouTube channels. Because there are some channels that genuinely want to educate children about things and want to make content for them. Yeah. But that's not the question. The question is how much of the children channels that are supposed to be run by children, how much power do they have? Do they have and do the parents get? Because a lot of kids aren't developed enough in their mind mm -hmm. in what is right or wrong to be able to see, hey, this is wrong. And even then, the child will grow up. Will grow up in front of the camera. That's another problem that can be seen with family and children related content mm -hmm. is in the future they then become associated with that content with that content yeah they so they may then want to distance themselves to develop their own personality their own person it's just like the child stars of the 90s oh my god yeah that's true basically where the children stars on Disney shows or on Nickelodeon shows. Yeah. They're gonna shake it up. Shake it up. Bella Thorne, when, when the show ended, immediately went to do a show more mature. Yeah. Because she didn't want to be attached to the Disney name. Or, McCulkley Culkin. I don't know what that he is. He plays Kevin McAllister in the original yeah. Home Alone yeah. movies. Yeah. He basically... He dropped out of TV in general, didn't he? Yeah, he basically had to separate himself from his parents and sue them for all the money that he made back when he was a child because um, his like, father yeah. was so strict on trying on him having a, a successful acting career. So when I, I hear that there was this one time, yeah, McCulkey Culkin was on SNL, he was hosting SNL. Okay. His father forced him to learn all the lines by heart. And even the actors, the main cast on SNL, they have cue cards. So they are allowed to forget, but not McCulkey. So, specifically, I'm going to focus on... On YouTube? On um, shows more... Because YouTube... YouTube is... It's big. Yeah. And it's not every channel that's the problem. It's... People have to be able to go through and sift out the channels that are. Mm -hmm. But because it's becoming so more and more of them, it's becoming more and more normal, which it shouldn't be. Yeah. Specifically, I want to switch over to the TV side of things more. Okay. Because I believe that parents have more control over what they watch on TV or on... Specifically, what parents have control more... More control specifically over what they watch on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But I want to direct this more towards the channels that are making children specific content. Okay. A lot of. A lot of the more like LGBT stuff mm -hmm. goes more towards streaming than what could get them the broader audience. 
That's specifically because the channels are afraid of the way other countries will receive yeah. that episode or that show. So, like, um, She-Ra and the Princess of the Power shoehorned in, had to shoehorn in a main romance in the final season. Because that's the only way the director could have, the director could have gotten the romance represented. Okay. Instead of being allowed to develop it over the course of the five seasons of the show. Or, um, Voltron. Which only has, like, one season focusing on a gay character. Mm -hmm. It is eight freaking seasons. Season seven is the only moment to show. Season eight is the only one that shows the gay kiss. Okay. Legend of Korra had to push its main. Had to push its um, or be its ending main ship to the final scene of the final episode because they were because they were afraid of Nickelodeon while it did get explored more in the comics that followed it yeah the only show that has a lesbian main relationship is the Owl House and even then that's only getting three seasons or two and a half It's like the okay shows like Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. And Miles Market Law, the lesser of the two. <laughs> but they won't. Because that doesn't really challenge anything. Like, it's a classic show, and we grew up watching it. Yeah. But... And I love the show. But. but... The darkest moment is the TV movie, or the, se the series finale. Or the emotional series finale, not the actual season finale. Okay. Because the movie explores the idea of the second dimension where Doofrin's merch controls everything. And the season finale. The season finale, the emotional season finale, the episode where they go to college, uh, Swampy and Stan, I think his name is, okay. intentionally wrote it to be emotional. Yeah. Because they wanted that to be the emotional end of the show. Because Disney was so unsure if they would want it to continue for merch sales. Isn't Phineas and Ferb like one of their most successful yes, shows? Yes, it is. So why wouldn't they want to continue it for merch sales? Because they didn't know how much more successful it would be. Mm. But that's something else. Oh, so that's why they moved it to Disney XD. Yeah, probably. Okay. The season, the specials get more dark than the regular season. Like specifically the cave, not the caveman episode, the zombies episode. Mm. Uh, where everyone gets turned into Doofrance merges. Doofrance merges, even when incorporated. I swear to God, this episode's <laughs> gonna get copy struck. Well, no. By so many people. No, no, no. That's what it feels like. But it's. We're protected. Specifically, Disney is the worst at this. Yeah. Well,. well Let's get let's get back on topic. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that later in the episode. Yeah. After after the ad break. Um which is coming up in 5 minutes. Okay. So, specific, let's focus back onto YouTube again. Yeah. Now that I've gone on my tangent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that's what that's sort Podcasts of are for. I'm. That's what this podcast is for. I'm asking open-ended questions so that you can go on tangents and have fun. But focusing back on YouTube, mm -hmm. dudes, the, one of the problems with YouTube is the bots. Yeah. Well. But what, what, I, have a, let's... I have a point about this. Okay. 
the bots need to stop focusing on the wrong thing. Like, they can focus on the, on the wrong labeled content. Yeah. But... They need to become more attentive to... The children... Run channels. You know? Yeah. Try and make... Try and, like, tighten the grip around them. Mm -hmm. So that they're not going as far as to potentially be child abuse, but they're still going far enough to stay within the light-hearted, goofy, like, YouTube, children's yeah. YouTube content. Um... Like, that's a problem with their bots. Yeah. But that's a different problem entirely. And I don't want to make this episode any longer than it already is. Well, I t this, these episodes typically go for 40 minutes to an hour, so yeah, well, we're coming up on the 30 minute mark. Yeah, so it's... So, as soon as... We get through the ad break. We can we can continue about the bots. I mean, like there's nothing wrong with children directed content. Yeah, but it, it just has to be. It just has to be regulated. Yeah, they have to make sure that the parents the parents aren't in too much control, but and make make sure the child get some of that money, or at least the child, the, some of the money gets put towards an education for the child. Yeah. So, it's not just children, supposedly children run channels. Mm -hmm. More um, family channels and family blogs. Some of them are more are at fault for this also. Yeah. Some of them really need to get regulated, and believe me. They really need to get regulated. I'm not going to get into the video that I want to talk about. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Specifically for um, some related content to mm -hmm. the video that shouldn't really talk about. Um, Just vaguely define that video. So Essentially, it's a prank channel or prank video that goes too far sexually if you get what I'm trying to put on okay and how old would th these adults um, okay yeah adults <laughs> um so what do you want to um, describe what would happen and little, little detail. About what? About what would happen in the videos. I, only, I saw a reaction to it, technically, oh, so... Just leave it. Just um, probably gonna knock off the camera. So I didn't actually... Back, back on top. <laughs> I didn't actually watch the video. Uh, no. The camera just turned off. Yeah. Well, let's just use the audio. I just want to make that clear, I didn't actually click on the video to watch it, mm -hmm. but it has to do with a certain female body part on the lower part of the body, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably have to explain this more to mom, but... <laughs> Let's let's make it to 31 minutes because there's.